Greetings, Mina sports fans. Magi Nation, this past weekend was not the way we wanted it. I understand the pain and frustration, but unfortunately not every day and every sporting event is guaranteed success. Yes, we're going to see a lot of that success and happiness, happy moments, but there are going to be dark days in there as well. That's just how life works, and unfortunately, that's what we have to deal with on a daily basis. I'd like to welcome you guys into episode 33 of the Minot Sports Podcast, a production of KMSU TV and Radio, sponsored by Joshua Strong Photography and the MSU Red and Green. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I'll get started with the West Region Basketball Tournament going on this past weekend in Bismarck. I was able to make the trip not only for Thursday's games, but for Saturday as well. There were no home events on Saturday, so luckily that opened up the time for Bismarck. Like I said, some of that happiness that we witnessed with Minot High Boys Hockey moving to state. This time, over here in basketball, the girls and the boys teams had a chance to move on to the next level. That is the state basketball tournament, which is going to be held in Fargo this year. So how did they end up where they got on Saturday? So for the boys... They beat the Legacy Sabres 75-65 to in the first game, moved on to the semifinals, lost to second-seeded Bismarck High. They kept it close with them. They almost had them, but Bismarck just snuck out of it. 86-80 to was the final score, and Minot, for most of that game, they were on a roll. It's just that Bismarck High, so good, they just, they came back and, you know, good teams, they're, they'll find a way to win. And for Minot, they were just unable to lock down that superpower of an offense from Bismarck High. But not too much to worry about because they were still alive in the West Region Tournament. And so that would mean they would play in a state qualifier. Again, guys, rules are that need two wins in the West Region Tourney to qualify for state. And in the state tourney itself, you need to win all three games. So Mina was still alive. And with the bracket, how it was set up, they were set to face the Dickinson Midgets, fifth seed. So the three v five... This one isn't guaranteed, looking at how close the seeds are. I'm getting the same feelings like the one where they played Legacy as well. It could be a toss-up for this one. As you guys can hear, Neil Roberts again, this time working in the live radio room. He's got Greg with him doing a live interview. Again, here's my endorsement to you guys. Go check out the KMSU radio website. There you can listen to live alternative music. And if you're lucky, you might be able to hear some live DJs in there as well. Back to what I was saying. So this matchup isn't a guarantee. Just like Mine at High and Legacy, it is a toss-up. Any of the two opponents can take this one. And for the results, it wasn't easy, but downside is that the Dickinson Midgets edge out Minot High barely. A heartbreaking fashion loss. It is 70 to 68. The Midgets from Dickinson take that one and move on to the state tournament. I'm bummed just like you guys are. 
And if you look at the season series, though, it was tied at one. Just like that's why I compare it to when Mine and High played Legacy. It was tied at one in the season series. So and they keep saying, yeah, it was a toss up. This could have been anyone's game. Just so lucky that Minot was able to get that first one against Legacy, but this one, not so much. Yeah, Dickinson won in Minot. That was a close one, actually. And then another close one in Dickinson where Minot won it. It was just bound to be another close game again. And unfortunately, the good guys did not get it. So their season is done. As for the Majets as well, also a tough break on Saturday. So how did they get to the state qualifier? First game, they faced off with the Bismarck High Demons, the third seed for the girls' side of the bracket. Lost to them in game one. Score of that one was 56-47, to 47. so Minot High made it a competition with them to do that against a good Bismarck High team. They're making progress. They're making strides for next year. But as all good teams, like Bismarck High, for example, they were able to find a way to win that one. The loser out game proved better for Minot as they faced the Dickinson Midgets. So the same team that the boys also faced, just in the loser out game, Minot beat them 52-38. to And winning in the loser out game, they got a date with the Mandan Braves, another good team in the West, but only two seeds higher than Minot High. One seed below Bismarck High, they were fourth. So it was still going to be, you know, not too fairly tough for Minot, but... At the same time, it's one where Mandan has beat them before, and there still might be some struggles against a good Mandan team, but it was a matchup that was destined to be, you know, a set for a state qualifier. For state qualifiers, you know how I referenced Mine and High versus Dickinson for the boys? The three versus the five seeds. And then you got this for the Majets, the four and the six seeds. These are the type of matchups that you should expect to see when watching tournaments like this. But for the Majets, an unfortunate loss against the Braves. It was 58-43. to 43, And the Majets season also ends without an appearance in the state tournament. There are going to be days like this, guys. Like I said, we're all going to experience some amazing, happy times, happy moments. But life is just, it's not how it's going to work every day. This was just one of the few dark moments we witnessed. And for some, there is no next season. The sad part, really. But it's season over now for both Majets and Magicians Basketball. We just now have to move on and take it in and just move on in life. So now we got spring sports coming up soon with softball and baseball, to name a few. A quick note for all the basketball seniors, including the cheerleaders as well. Thank you guys for all the service and dedication and the time you put into the Mine and High basketball programs. They couldn't have done it without you guys. Your work and time here will be much appreciated. And coming from the KMSU Studios, thank you guys. I appreciate you. And so that's that for high school basketball season for Minot, the Magicians and Majets. There's still some more Class B action going on. As today is the... Region 6 tournament opener at the Minot State Dome. Both Ari Deemers and Bishop Ryan Boys were lucky enough to grab two of the eight spots heading into this tournament because the Ari Deemers Knights won the District 12 championship. 
they earned the first seed for the Region 6 tourney, well, at least for one side of the bracket. And Bishop Ryan, they got third, so they'll get the third seed in the Region 6 tourney. Again, for one side of the bracket. Bishop Ryan and Ari Deemers are on the same side of the bracket. And then they have the other regional winner for the other side of the bracket and so on and so forth. I was lucky enough to be there for both the Knights and Lions games. A big thanks to Sean Griffin from Minot State Athletics for allowing me onto the media table, allowing me to do my thing and bring you guys some plentiful content. If you guys are still not familiar, our Redeemers and Bishop Ryan are two Class B high schools here in town, not on the same level as mine at high, so friendly relations with them. Although Bishop Ryan and our Redeemers do play each other in select athletics. But for this tournament, they went their own ways. There were other teams in the region that opened up the tournament today, so our Redeemers and Bishop Ryan had to wait. Our Redeemers had the 6 o'clock game. They faced the Towner Granville Upham Titans, TGU for short. And the Knights took that one by a score of 54 to 46. Lots of efficient offense that I saw from the Knights. You know, Class B isn't all that high scoring, but beings the Knights played fantastic defense. This was a good game for Class B standards. And it gets even better with the next one. Although the Bishop Ryan Lions lost. It was still a fun game to watch till the end. The Drake Animus Raiders, second seed from one of the other regional tournaments. I do not know off the top of my head. They beat the Lions 56-54. to So the Lions in it all the way, but was not able to fulfill their goal. So not a fun time to be a fan of Minot High and Bishop Ryan basketball. But the thing with Bishop Ryan, they're going to retain every player next year. They don't have one senior minus a cheerleader or two. I do not know off the top of my head, but they will be back next year. Bishop Ryan had some great shooters. I counted seven threes from them. And that's not to debunk Drake Animus either. This was a very high percentage shooting game. Drake Animus had 10 threes. So it was raining. It was basically raining in the dome tonight. And all that rain led to a, a very slight margin in that Drake Animus had the effort and work to be able to move on to the next round, which they will be facing the R Redeemers Knights in one of the two semifinal games. Tomorrow in the Dome, 7.30, should be a fun one. Both teams, I thought, played to their set styles of play. R Redeemers just had an efficient offense. Not as much reigning threes, but... They get those easy two-pointers, and they hit their free throws too. Whereas Drake Animus, more loose, shooting the threes much more. So I think it's going to be real interesting to see how both defenses will come into this one. And I must say, it is an exciting matchup. So again, tomorrow at the Dome, 7.30, should be a fun one. This past weekend was much needed for your Minot Minotaurus hockey team. Of course, granted, they played the last place team in the NAHL Central Division, the Blizzard from St. Cloud, Minnesota. Blizzard kind of gave the Toros a run for their money. It's been a few instances where the Blizzard tied it or the Toros tied it. 
This just goes to show you that the Blizzard, despite having a rough past few years for them, they're still making it not easy for the other teams in the Central. And the Toros need to be careful because they can easily play this spoiler role. And don't let the Minnesota Wilderness catch up either because they're right behind them. Other than that, Toros collecting big wins versus the St. Cloud Blizzard, 7-4 on Friday night, 5-3 on Saturday. And yes, the score says it all. There were no regards for defense. But then again, North American Hockey League, all throughout there's been quite a bit of firepower of offense. So this one probably should not come as a surprise to most NAHL executives. Keeping it on stick and puck, your Beavers men's team was home on Friday night. Kind of an awkward shift in the schedule. Beavers were supposed to play on the road Friday and at home Saturday versus the Jamestown Jimmies. But both games got moved a day ahead. And so this one was the final regular season and home game for your Beavers men's hockey team. For how much the Jimmies have given the Beavers a lot of struggles, Jamestown, a little bit on them. They've been, for how much Minot State has beat them a couple years back, completely blown out and just having their number, it's been a role reversal now. Jimmies have given the Beavers some fits and struggles, and so... They've been really growing as a program, but this game, it was all Beavers, and thank goodness because they'll need the confidence heading into Nationals where they will face, as I mentioned already in the last episode, they are facing the same Jimmies. Minus State is the fifth seed in the tournament. Jamestown is the 12th, but again, don't let the seeds fool you. Minot State will need to be on their A game against a team that they have not had much success against them this past season. 4-1 to was the final score, and really the big, the big moment in the game was when Jamestown had a five-minute major and the Beavers wasted no time. They scored two goals on that power play both by Paul O'Connor and Adam Wowrick. Adam Wowrick, goal-scoring machine this year, scored his 31st on Friday. They made good use of the power play, and really Jamestown just could not recover from it. So opportunistic Beavers, a win for them right before Nationals begin on March 19th. And so that concludes the regular season for your Beavers men's hockey team. And then for the women's squad, they're in the conference tournament. In game one, your Beavers scored one goal against the Lindenwood Lynx. That would be all they need. one nothing victory. And so then they moved on to the WMCH championship game versus Liberty University. And Liberty will take that one in another low scoring game, two to one. So women's hockey, not the result of the victory, but they will now move on to join the men's team in the national tournament. I'm kind of surprised that it took me this long to talk about this. Because if there's one thing that's really exciting that should make up for the losses of Minot High Basketball, Minot High Magicians Swimming, state champions once again. They rule the state for a third straight year. That will be their 28th state championship. Gonna hang another banner coming soon. But overall, just yet another great season, great year for Minot High Magicians Swimming. They always say 
swim hard and swim fast or however it goes. That's what they did, though. Nice job, boys. And so there are new champions in town. Mighty High fans, be proud because you will be interacting, heck, just even going to the same school in general with state champions. They are valuable. Going back to the basketball topic, a congrats goes out to Allie Nelson of the Majets, and then for the Magicians, Jackson Gunville and Easton Larson. All three were named to the All-WDA teams. Putting in the work, and it's paying off. Nice job, you three. Then some more Sabre Dogs news. They recruit. I think this is a big signing considering it's from the Tennessee Volunteers, a Division I college. Sabre Dogs recruit right-handed pitcher Cam Hansen, a big addition to the mound. So welcome, Cam, to the Magic City. He'll be one of the many pitchers that you will see for the Sabre Dogs this upcoming summer. Quick note, guys, the Minot Sports Podcast is a production of KMSU TV and Radio, sponsored by Joshua Strong Photography and the MSU Red and Green. That is all I have for this one. Thank you guys for checking it out, Minot High fans. Although it sucks to lose in the West Region Tournament for basketball, there's still lots to be proud of for both the Majets and Magicians. Be happy for the swim team, too. Bishop Ryan, don't worry. It'll be better next year, as you guys will be retaining all players on the roster. Minus some of the senior cheerleaders that won't be there next year. Which... You have done great work for the Ryan Lions program. And that is all. Thank you guys for checking this one out. Thank you for 200 followers on the Instagram. Much appreciated. I love you guys. And we're just about to hit 150 on the Twitter as well. The support means a lot to me. So thank you. I'll talk to you guys later. And as always... Take care.